All right, uh, the last section of the notes for Unit 2 will be done through uh, the Unit 2 Study Guide Worksheet Number 2. So there won't be a formal PowerPoint notes with this, or at least a voiceover of the PowerPoint notes. We're going to do the, uh, the major organelles of the eukaryotic cell, essentially, uh, just through a series of drawings and illustrations of the major organelles and also a kind of a description of their functions. So we'll get structure and function of uh, the organelles of the eukaryotic cells from Unit 2 Study Guide Worksheet Number 2. Now this first page was done, it's an overview of the plasma membrane. It was done in a, in a previous video and so hopefully yours should look like this now in terms of uh, being a completed version of that plasma membrane. And we'll kind of really briefly uh, review those globular proteins, but we won't spend a lot of time on them. Uh, the major focus of this uh, particular uh, portion of the unit is to look at the uh, organelle structure and function of the organelles of the eukaryotic cell. So if you locate this, uh, should be front and back. And so on the back side of this um, study guide worksheet number two from where we did the plasma membrane, I'm going to slide these out of the way for a second, you should have a uh, graphic or a page that looks similar to this. And at the top, there's just kind of a, you know, I'll go through these uh, fairly quickly. Um, just a, a quick review of the uh, globular proteins, the integral globular proteins associated with the plasma membrane. The first one is uh, one of these transport proteins. That's the carrier proteins. And remember, there's two of these carrier proteins, carrier globular protein 1 and carrier globular protein 2. But essentially what they do is they connect The, uh, we'll call it the ECF to save us a little bit of time. That's the extracellular fluid uh, to the cytoplasm. So those are the two solutions again, the solution inside the cell and the solution outside the cell. The process that's associated with those carrier proteins is facilitated diffusion. which is a passive uh, type of movement of molecules. Um, it's just the carrier globular protein one basically helps to move molecules uh, across the membrane. And then the other one that is uh, not passive is active transport. And active transport basically uses energy to pump those molecules back and forth across the membrane. The example that we looked at was a sodium potassium pump. The cell recognition globular protein has that unique carbohydrate chain that identifies the, uh, the cell as belonging to the individual. It's part of your immune response. And remember that those are unique uh, to each uh, individual. The channel uh, protein, again, is one of these transport proteins. Similar to the carrier uh, globular proteins, it connects uh, the extracellular fluid to the cytoplasm. It's basically like a conduit or a little channel uh, between those two. Uh, solutions and it's involved in uh, just facilitated diffusion. The example that we talked about was the aquaporin which is involved with a specific type of uh, facilitated diffusion in terms of the movement of water and uh, that movement of water is called osmosis. The receptor globular protein has a uh, binding site. You 
and that binding site is the location where hormones and enzymes attach. to turn on or promote chemical reactions inside the cell. Kind of running out of room here, but we'll make it work. So that's a pretty brief overview, but there's a lot of that that we'd already talked about and covered in previous uh, lectures in the voiceover powerpoints and the, uh, the video over the plasma membrane so you can go back and review that as you have time down here we have a uh, it's a pretty old graphic of a uh, eukaryotic cell and there's some uh, major organelles here that uh, we want to identify and label over here on the left hand side so I'm going to go fairly quickly through this I do want to make uh, one uh, kind of adjustment to this uh, graphic or this diagram. This is the uh, this structure with the uh, little kind of rough looking surface on it is the rough endoplasmic reticulum and the uh, newer graphics basically show a, almost like a continuation of the rough endoplasmic reticulum with the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And so I want to kind of just connect those two structures uh, to be a little bit more current and up to date with, uh, with the graphics that you'll see in your textbooks today. So let's get these labeled real quick. I don't expect you to necessarily recognize all of these. Some of them you will. Um, after we get this labeled, what we're, we're going to do is we're going to go in and take a look at each one of these organelles and draw them individually and uh, you know, discuss uh, basically their structure and function. Number one on this diagram is the uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum. And if you'll let me, I'll kind of expedite things just by abbreviating uh, endoplasmic reticulum. Number two, you should recognize number two is the nucleus. And we know that that's the defining organelle of eukaryotic cells. Number three, you may or may not uh, know, it's uh, inside of the nucleus. And it's kind of this dark, conspicuous region inside of the nucleus. Sounds like nucleus, just add a couple of extra vowels here and there. And that is actually the nucleolus. And then number four uh, basically is pointing to that um, oh, that rough kind of texture inside of the nucleus, which is the DNA. And if the cell is not dividing, uh, that DNA is in the chromatin form. We'll talk more about the two different forms of DNA later when we get into the next unit. Number five is our old buddy. I have trouble saying this from time to time. You might have noticed in a previous video. That is the mighty mitochondria. We know that's one of those energy organelles, and we learned about it a little bit uh, when we talked about the origins of eukaryotic cells through the endosymbiosis uh, theory and uh, some on cellular respiration. Number six, these are, you'll just kind of see randomly uh, throughout the cytoplasm. We're just going to call them storage organelles for now. We'll go into a little bit more detail about those uh, when we get to that section. Uh, but the storage organelles are basically uh, oh, a single membrane that store variable substances for the cell. And you really can't identify them unless you know what's actually inside of the, uh, the organelle. Number seven is the Golgi apparatus, named for our old buddy Antoine Golgi. So the first uh, letter is always capitalized. I think the spelling's right on this. Uh, whole bunch of A's two P's. 
I'll double check me later on that. Uh, number eight is uh, way up here, and that is the uh, structure that surrounds the cell. That's the plasma membrane. which uh, you probably had your fill of. We've spent a lot of time talking about the plasma membrane. Um, nine is the uh, water-based fluid on the interior of the cell, so that's the cytoplasm. We won't worry about 10 or 11 uh, protein strands. Where's 11? I think 11 is meant to illustrate a Oh, a uh, lysosome, but uh, skip those for now. Number 12 are these kind of little dots, and they're actually found in two different areas. They could be out here free in the cytoplasm, but they're also on the surface of this uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum, which is number 14. So 12 are uh, ribosomes. If they're loose or out in the uh, cytoplasm, they're called free-floating ribosomes. If they are attached to the rough endoplasmic reticulum, they're just ribosomes associated with the rough ER. And that's number 14. And it's the last one on your graphic. So that's the rough endoplasmic reticulum. The last thing on this uh, front page, basically it says to convert this eukaryotic cell into a plant cell by adding and labeling a cell wall. And so here is my carefully drawn illustration of a cell wall surrounding the eukaryotic cell. And we'll label this the cell wall. The cell wall you would see in uh, plant cells and uh, fungi, uh, but not in animal cells. So that's the first page. And that kind of sets the uh, stage for what, where we're going with the rest of this section, which is basically a summary of the, the major organelles in eukaryotic cells. And so that takes us to the second page, which is a series of, I guess, uh, almost like a table uh, that lists um, some of the, the major organelles of the eukaryotic cell. And we will start with the defining organelle of the eukaryotic cell, uh, which is the uh, nucleus. And we'll also add the nucleolus. So basically what we're gonna do is draw your cell, and we're gonna draw a whole bunch of these, and just kind of continuously add the organelles and describe their function as we go. So that first structure is meant to illustrate the, uh, the plasma membrane. We're gonna draw them kind of in a, a pretty, you know, structured shape in terms of the plasma membrane. You'll see that kind of rectangular shape in some plant cells, but in general, animal cells will be kind of more of an irregular shape. And so if you see that, you know, irregular shape in a diagram or something like that versus a, you know, more of a consistent rectangular shape, it may be the difference between a plant and animal cell. So uh, this represents, I'm just gonna abbreviate it here. This is the membrane. And so that's our old buddy, the plasma membrane. Uh, this is the nucleus. And inside of the nucleus, you have that kind of dark conspicuous region. And then you have the uh, genetic material kind of loosely scattered uh, throughout the, the interior of the nucleus. This dark region, conspicuous region, the arrow's not great, uh, but that is the nucleolus. And then all of this stuff out here 
represents the DNA in the chromatin form. And then you have uh, on the interior of the cell, that water-based solution on the interior of the cell is the cytoplasm. So let's move over here real quick and we'll get the, uh, uh, basically the functions of these different structures. The nucleus is surrounded by a membrane. It's called the nuclear membrane or the nuclear envelope. And the nuclear membrane essentially separates um, the nucleolus and the DNA from the cytoplasm. The nucleus contains the DNA. which is a chemical information system for the cell. And it also contains the nucleolus. Which we'll talk about here in just a minute. The function of the DNA, DNA really controls three things. And we've kind of beat this up a little bit before, uh, but it controls heredity, cell division, and protein synthesis. So chemical information system for the cell, uh, DNA really controls those uh, three major processes. The nucleolus makes a uh, a different type of uh, nucleic acid. It makes an RNA, uh, but specifically it makes ribosomal RNA. So it synthesizes ribosomal RNA. And ribosomal RNA is abbreviated as R RNA. There's three RNAs, and we'll talk about those um, as we get into the unit on uh, DNA and protein synthesis. All right, let's drop down here and uh, start with basically the same scenario. So we're going to draw our plasma membrane. We're going to draw in the nucleus, the nucleolus, the DNA. And here we're looking at uh, basically the endoplasmic reticulum, both the uh, rough and smooth. The endoplasmic reticulum houses the ribosomes, and so the ribosomes are involved uh, with protein synthesis and the information for building the proteins is found in the DNA and so the rough endoplasmic reticulum is always kind of in close association with the uh, with the nucleus and this piece of the, uh, the endoplasmic reticulum with these little round structures on it represents the rough ER and those little round structures are uh, basically the ribosomes. So this is the rough ER or rough endoplasmic reticulum. This is the smooth ER. And uh, here again you have the nucleus, uh, the nucleolus, and the DNA. I'm not going to go ahead and label those. I might do that later for you, but uh, and then you have the cytoplasm out here. These little structures on the surface of the uh, rough endoplasmic reticulum are ribosomes. 
And you also have ribosomes out here. Remember, so two locations for the ribosomes. And these would be those examples of the free-floating ribosomes. get you the, uh, the functions for the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Basically, it houses the ribosomes that are the site of uh, protein synthesis. So the rough ER is kind of these series of membranous tubules, uh, basically that have ribosomes associated with them. The proteins that are made at the ribosomes on the surface of the rough endoplasmic reticulum are temporarily stored uh, in the membranes and then they're exported out of the cell. The uh, smooth ER basically produces hormones and lipids And it will also um, help to break down and detoxify drugs and alcohol. So some people who have had, unfortunately, had problems with these things will develop uh, large amounts of uh, smooth endoplasmic reticulum in their cells and their liver cells and they will develop a tolerance initially until those cells are just overcome. Um, and that's, uh, you know, that smooth ER, another function of that smooth ER is to break down drugs and alcohol, especially in the liver cells. All right, I'm going to draw a uh, kind of a, oh, a, uh, a magnified version of a ribosome here. And so this is, uh, again, it's uh, essentially just a representative structure of what we think uh, a ribosome would look like. And a ribosome is made up of two parts. It's made up of a large ribosomal subunit and a small ribosomal subunit. And so this represents the uh, large portion of the ribosomal subunit. And then the smaller piece is the uh, small ribosomal subunit. Now the ribosome itself is made up of two different types of uh, molecules. And so one portion and these two different types of molecules make up both the large and small uh, component of the ribosome. And the molecules that make up a ribosome, one of them is one of our old buddies, um, it's a, a nucleic acid. And this one happens to be ribosomal RNA. And we know that ribosomal RNA is synthesized in the uh, nucleolus. That ribosomal RNA is basically kind of incorporated into or embedded into another molecule, which is a, uh, I'm just gonna abbreviate GP, a globular protein. And so there's two molecules, types of molecules, that make up both the large and small ribosomal subunit. And those two types of molecules are uh, ribosomal RNA embedded in a globular protein. So those two things make up the, uh, essentially the structure or the molecules that compromise the, the large and small ribosomal subunits. The function, they just make proteins.
So they're kind of the uh, workhorse of the cell in terms of, uh, you know, DNA is the brains, uh, but the ribosome and uh, ribosomal RNA, messenger RNA, transfer RNA are kind of the grunts that do the physical work of the process of building the proteins. The specific function of the free-floating ribosomes, remember they can be ribosomes either out loose in the cytoplasm or on the surface of the rough ER. If proteins are made at these free-floating ribosomes, those proteins stay within and are used by the cell. So proteins synthesized at free-floating ribosomes uh, stay inside of the cell. And then the proteins that are made at the ribosomes on the surface of the rough ER are actually exported out of the cell. I think, you know, examples of these types of proteins would be like the proteins that get uh, released into the lumen or the space, the opening of the small intestine to help you break down, um, you know, uh, organic molecules, food, and those types of things. These types of proteins could be used for a variety of, uh, you know, structural or functional proteins uh, within the cell. I think we'll take a break there, and then we'll come back and we'll finish uh, the second half of this uh, worksheet two in the uh, video two involved with uh, worksheet number two.